Roller coasters are designed to stir all kinds of emotions with every twist and turn delivering a different impact on the rider. But is it possible to measure physical reactions like fear and pleasure? Welcome to the world of Brendan Walker, one of the world's leading thrill ride experts. Brendan has come to Fahrenheit to show designers if the thrills they promised really deliver. He's joined by thrill technician Stefan, who helped gather and decipher the data. To be able to actually put a human guinea pig on, like me, and actually monitor the effect it's really having on a rider, it's going to give them a real insight into the, into the effectiveness of what they've designed. What happens to our body on a high-octane coaster? Brendan's about to find out. So we're leaving the station now. Looking around, I've got my first sight of the rise coming up against me. A sheer vertical climb. So we're trundling towards it now. It's a beautiful sunny day. So we're going up now. He's wired up to record his heartbeat, face muscle expressions, and sweat gland response. Going up into a vertical position, pointing directly up at the sun. Absolutely beautiful, clear day. I'm trying to look left and right. I can just about see the Hershey sign on the hill. He's about to experience 85 seconds of extreme fear and pleasure. Oh, we're topping out, we're topping out. God, the view's amazing. We're looking down. Oh, oh, oh no shimmy. And uh, a barrel roll around. Straight down. Right around. And a twist as well. And straight down towards the ground. This is amazing. Oh, it's way too soon. Around. Oh, the ground zooming up so fast. And around again. Oh, my God. Oh, it's another time. <laughs> and another go. Go. This is amazing. And another coming round. Over. Oh, oh, oh. oh, a little buddy hop there. Let's jump over the Denton point now. Oh, slowing down. So, slowed right down. So, we're about to come back into the station. That was absolutely amazing. Just what you need first thing in the morning. It's, it was extreme and intense. Brendan and Stefan are eager to see the results. They want to find out if the data validates the experiences designers set out to deliver. Before we got seven data streams coming in. So all of these things have helped us pick out these various ride features. Each one of these graphs shows a different level of reaction in Brendan's body. They first take a look at his arousal, which they expect to increase dramatically. Actually starting to climb. In fact, now we are climbing now. We can see here from that accelerometer. Um, so I'm getting spikes in pleasure as well. So I'm finding something quite entertaining. In anticipation, the heart rate reaches its peak before the action really begins. And he's now hit a really big plateau in heart rate. It's 140, 150, which is around just all the way. Brendan's has gone up from 60 to 150 beats per minute. On the hill, oh, we're topping out, we're topping out. His excitement is really building, and the ride is clearly working. God, the view's amazing. We're looking down. Oh! So one expression, which is quite interesting there, is this big kind of open mouth kind of shout, scream. Yeah. So it's almost like a scream, but of pleasure, as opposed to a scream of horror. Yes. Yeah. After the drop, the heart rate levels down to a more manageable 120 for the rest of the twists and turns. So I'm into all these amazing twists and turns and getting little spikes again. Yeah, still getting good spikes and pleasure. And you can yeah. see definitely on my face here, I'm really having a good time. Yeah. Next, they take a look at the facial expressions. The frown muscles are indicators of fear, while the smile muscles register pleasure. Actually, by looking at the senses and looking at the, those very particular muscle groups associated with those emotions, whether it's pleasure or fear, yeah. we can actually discern those difficult to read facial expressions. We can actually discern whether they are through pleasure or fear. The fear now has completely plateaued out to the bottom, almost getting you know, flatlining. And the heart rate's still very high. Yeah. Brendan starts to really enjoy himself. The heart rate has plateaued, and his sweat glands have opened up, revealing spikes of pleasure as he goes through the rolls. This, this whole section is completely maxing out on back. And now we're coming to a very tight curve, so, a 360 curve. Yeah. yeah, so more pleasure here than fear. Okay, 360 curve. Yeah, a, lot more, a lot more pleasure here. The ride is over, 
but Brendan's heart is still racing. That's kind of interesting, coming back into the station. So that was my heart rate's actually gone back up to 100, so there's obviously something uh, quite arousing about seeing spectators, people I know. So there's definitely something about sort of the performance aspect of, of being on a ride. Get me out, please. <laughs> and now the rider stops, yeah. um, and your heart rate's dropped back to 90. So and also, you can see as I started talking to people, the levels of pleasure started shooting up as well, so that's kind of yeah. nice. A bit of social interaction as well. Yeah. It's good. Brendan and Stefan can now attempt to draw some conclusions. Right from the start, the ride is clearly creating a rich mix of emotions. I think something we didn't expect, that after the, the moment of sort of fear and anxiety and that sort of period of mixed emotions is the ride setting off. And we're feeling uh, arousal, but also within arousal, you could also be feeling fear or pleasure at the same time. We're topping out, we're topping out. God, the view's amazing, we're looking down. That peak. I think it's a vertical drop, but in fact it's 97 degrees. And at that moment, I remember being shocked by you know what I was experiencing. I didn't experience, I didn't expect that at all. I think my fear level shoots up, but yeah. also I experienced a huge spike in pleasure as well. The analysis proves designers succeeded in creating sensations of pleasure after the initial terrifying drop. You can see a drop. So looking at my GSR and heart rate, I'm sort of me, sort of getting into a zone of serenity. So actually, it's a period where I'm kind of reassessing, sort of rebooting, and sort of in psychology terms, that's sort of reaching a kind of baseline, normalizing myself again. So it's kind yeah. of like preparing me for the onslaught of effects. This ride mixes fear and pleasure to create a great sense of thrill. Yeah, I think we can safely say that the ride design has been hugely successful in creating a very, a, a very experiential ride. Yeah. One surprising piece of data makes Brendan think engineers have missed a trick. The train comes to a dramatic break at the end of the ride. A spike in Brendan's heart rate indicates fear. Brendan thinks designers can offer riders a quick payoff of pleasure, and a music effect could do the job. So there could be an event that should immediately follow that, that, that breaking moment. If I were revisiting this ride as a ride designer, I would be looking for opportunities at that point to inject some level of pleasure. It could be something as absurd as introducing some, some silly pop song or something that just makes people smile, but just a split yeah. second after that break. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Coming up, the next generation of virtual reality on the edge of Niagara Falls and a coaster so fearsome that to ride it is to conquer it. Do not resist.